It's okay if you mess up because all the greats have done it. And if you don't, it means that you are not ready to be great. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? The most unselfish thing a person can do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. Welcome back to another episode of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Bailey, and in today's training episode, I'm going to talk to you about how I went from a broke carpet cleaner for two and a half years, making $19,000 and $21,000 in a year, over to a seven-figure-plus entrepreneur, and the one moment that shifted it for me that I learned from Gary Vee that I'm actually going to play in a clip right now for you. We're all the hospital and all this stuff, but we also have a company together, Nicholas. And I see so I'm torn between the two companies. One gets me more recognition in this, this space, the other one... So I was going through Instagram today and I, this clip got brought up to me. You can see if you're watching on YouTube how young I was in this clip. This was five years ago and it's made me start thinking about something I could teach from this because life is dramatically different now. If you notice in that video, I was asking Gary Vee a question of should I continue in the business of my father's? Cleaning carpet is my main source of income. I made it sound maybe a little bit better than it actually was, which I'll get to in a second. Or should I go out there and start this other business that you guys now see today in the studio that provides for my life and other people's lives and my son's life, all these different things that allows me to live the life that I live now. And I want to take you through the process of what I went through to get up to that moment. I want to give you context around that moment, exactly what I took away and how you can implement it as well. So going back a little bit, many of you guys know some of my story of how I grew up, my parents splitting up, etc. Yet when I first got married with and only got married. I was 20. My wife was 18 years old. And right away, we went through this process that I kind of talked about in the Q&A episodes is we went through this process of why did we get married? You know, we didn't get married to be separated. So if we got married to be together. What are the different ways that we could do that? And we went through this process of elimination where we're thinking, well, if we got two jobs, it's probably going to be difficult for both of us to work at the same exact time in the same exact place. So how can we be together? Well, we don't have all this money or people that are going to provide for us, et cetera. So we probably should go out there and start a business. The first business that we started was in network marketing and we thought we were retired. I remember going out to people, they'd go, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I got residual income. I'm retired at 20, 21 years old. Well, little did I know that that company was actually going to tank. They tanked, everyone's incomes tanked, we tanked. And the problem was is that we were in a good opportunity level 10 opportunity, making money because the company was making money, but we had not become the people or built the skill sets to have a level 10 skill set. So when the income was taken from us, we really didn't know what to do. We were flopping like a fish out of water. I remember being in a townhome I couldn't afford to actually live in. So as soon as I wasn't able to get help with the rent, I was helping project or manage the property. As soon as they didn't need me, I couldn't afford to live there. So I had to move out. I remember renting a bedroom from my dad for 30 days. He let us stay there while we looked for a new place. And I was going from place to place to place. One of my mentors even tried to have me live in the back of a halfway home where I offered not 500, which was my budget, but $600 a month in rent and the, and the state denied us. So I was in this place of complete failure and I was in a place as well as a failure as a husband. I wasn't able to provide for my wife and that just, uh, just was so draining for me. At the time, I was trying to find all these different ways to create success. I want to be a pro athlete. I was, I was racing motocross. I was riding four days a week. And it really brought me to this point when I got that email that we had no place to live. That's really where it hit me. I was at an event. My wife was excited. We were feeling so pumped about being able to go out there and pursue our dreams. And I remember thinking that we had locked in this place to rent for 600 bucks behind this halfway home. And it was nice. It was going to be great. I got this email saying that the state denied us from being able to go out there and actually be able to live in that place. And when that email came in, I saw my wife so excited and I had to break this news to her. I remember walking around the corner in the exact same place that I actually told her this news and just feeling like a failure. We went and visited her family right after. And the commitments that I made to myself was I was going to sell my motorcycles. I was going to quit going after dreams and I was going to go take care of my responsibilities. We came back in debt. We moved into a 400 square foot one bedroom apartment. And we started over. We had no AC. I remember it being 110 degrees during the summer. We actually lived there in the height of the summer, which was terrible. Parking outside, just like uh, just feeling like I had completely failed as a husband. I had completely failed as a provider. I had completely failed myself. I thought that just years prior 
that I was retired, I was going places, that I was going to be this successful entrepreneur. I had a little taste of success and it was all stripped from me. I remember going to my dad and saying, dad, ah, can I come work with you? My dad owns a carpet cleaning company. Now it's working cleaning carpets. And over the next two years, I clocked a $19,000 yearly income and a $21,000 yearly income when I was just talking about being retired. Now think about, I live in San Diego. I did at the time. I now live in Austin, Texas. Yeah, at the time, the average person, I believe in California, makes like $77,000 a year, a household income. We were making less than $30,000 a year. We had a $75 a week eating budget. That's not eating out, that's eating. We had $25 split between us for eating out budget. I was on the road every single day and we were hardly able to make the payment on our car and gas and rent. And we were charging most of those things on credit card to eat, to fill up on gas, while we used all of our debit money or our actual cash to invest in our rentals, because at the time you couldn't do that, and to invest in our car, which you couldn't pay a car loan with credit at the time. Maybe you can now. And I remember feeling like this failure. And it got to this point where after two years of just sitting there taking care of my responsibilities, it got to the point where I knew that I was never going to be successful that route either. Right, I had tried going to the events and doing all the stuff and hiring the mentors and I failed. I lost all my income. I thought it was guaranteed success. So I went the other way. I remember when getting invited to events and if I had to pay for parking, I wouldn't show up. I was so frugal because I felt like if I gave someone else money, then they were winning and I wasn't. I felt so frugal because I had tried in the past and it didn't work for me. I, I would try to save every dime that I had. I would not go anywhere. I wouldn't invest in myself. I didn't want to buy anything. I didn't want to invest in anything. And I realized that it was going to caused me to be a broke carpet cleaner for the rest of my life. Sitting there in carpet cleaning van going, it's been two years, made 19 grand, 21 grand. This is not the path to success. I already know what life's going to be like in the next 20 years if I do not make a change. And so it's time to loosen up and start taking calculated risks again. And this brought us to the place where my wife ended up investing in our company, $5,000 into our first mastermind and ultimately led me to this event where I saw Gary Vee was coming into town coming into San Diego. So the first time I no, not really, no one knows this. The first time he had a small meetup, you know, Gary V used to do these meetups in 2015, 16, where he would just show up places and he would just talk to people. They would all gather around. Well, I went up to him and I remembered that he was from Russia. And he said, back in the day, we used to do things differently. You know, we used to handshake, we'd spit in our hand and we'd shake hands on it. So I went up to him and I thought, what's a way that I could stand out and say, you really would do that? And he goes, yeah. And I spit in my hand, he spits in his hand and we shake hands. And that was the first connection. I knew I had to go back the next day though. So there was an event called, I think it was social media marketing world, huge event. I didn't have the money to invest or at least I didn't think I did at the time. I remember going there and I, my, I literally got like a badge or I snuck in and I walked in confidently all the way to the front of the stage to watch the end of Gary Vee. I sat down thinking that I was doing something wrong. I was and thinking I was going to get in trouble. Gary V got down. I walked straight to the front stage and I'm just sitting there being in proximity. Like, I need to learn from this guy. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I'm failing. I failed investing in myself and I failed not investing in myself and I'm scared and I don't know what to do. So I followed him off the stage and I saw he's going to a book signing. At this book signing, he was signing one of his brand new books. And so I went up and I bought a book and I waited in line. I followed Gary and I was talking to him and I was trying to be in proximity. And I finally got to the point where he's going to sign my book and he's like, who's this for? And you guys see, I'm like, I don't care who this is for. I'm not here to get a book signed. I have a question and I need direction. And here's what it was. I asked Gary, I said, Gary, I have two options, two businesses, two routes I can go. I've been carpet cleaning for two years and I didn't tell him I was making 19K, 21K, but he had worked for his dad in his business. So I was really interested to see what he's going to say. He said, I had the carpet cleaning business. I could keep going with this. I could grow my dad's business and that would open me up to maybe have revenue some alkylates saying, hey, look how much money the business does and look at what I've learned. Maybe I could consult other carpet cleaning businesses or buy them up and acquire customers and then ultimately get the respect that was needed. So I go out there and teach people, which is what I really wanted to do. I wanted to impact people. I said, or I had this other company that's not proven, hasn't created any revenue and it's my passion. It's what I love to do, but I was so scared to do anything I was actually passionate about because I'd failed in the past, right? Motocross and other businesses I'd failed. I'm like, this is for sure going to take care of my responsibilities. We're not going to be able to live in the nice place or eat the nice food, but it keeps us from dying, keeps us from drowning, which I had felt before. And many people out there, maybe you felt this before. Some of you, maybe you're just 
creating your first style of success and you've never had a setback. Other people, we've been punched in the face. And after you get punched in the face, then you flinch sometimes when someone comes to punch you again, we flinch. And that happens in life. And I, I needed that help and that support to be able to go out there and, and attack life again without just flinching. So Gary, $80,000, $150,000 keynote, looks at me and he goes, well, why don't you just do both? Why don't you just build the carpet cleaning company and start your own company? I said, Gary, I've been trying to do this for like three freaking years. I've been carpet cleaning and my wife's been interning, interning underneath the health coach. We've been trying to do this on our own. Like we try to do both and it has not been working. So he goes, well, why don't you just choose one? I go, dude, you get paid 150 grand for a keynote to tell me this crap. I could do this. So he pulls out a book called Crush It. It was the first book he wrote in 2009. And he flipped to the section where he missed angel investing in Uber. So he had, he had the opportunity to be a first round investor in Uber. That investment would have made him a multi-billionaire accomplishing his goal of paying for outright the Jets and owning a sports team. That was his ultimate goal. And he would have already been there if he just would have not missed this one decision. And he said, Nicholas, you know the difference between you and I? He said, you think your decisions matter. He says, when I make bad decisions, I can just make them right again. The worst killer, the biggest killer right now for you and other people out there is going to be indecision. You have failure to make a decision. And that indecision is the ultimate failure. And all of a sudden, I had this massive clarity. It's like, it doesn't matter if I make the right decision. What matters the most right now is that with excellence, meaning you make the best decision based on where you're currently at. So based on your current knowledge, skill set, network, availability, all the resources that you have, making the best decision possible, that's called excellence. Perfection is expecting a guarantee in a world that gives no guarantees. People want a guarantee out there, so they never make a decision. Other people, they want to give excellence. So I decided in that moment, I go, all right, he missed on this opportunity, but he's so clear on where he's going in life. He's not afraid of missing opportunities because he already knows he's going to get there. Think about that for a second. Gary Vee was so confident that he was going to get to where he wanted to be that he wasn't even scared of missing out on this opportunity because he, was, he knew no matter what he was going to get there, even if he made a bad decision, he was going to get there. I was so scared that if I just made the wrong decision, I was going to fail. If I left my dad, then I was going to fail my family. If I, did this if I didn't do the coaching business, I was going to fail by not doing that. And I was stuck in this period of indecision for years where I just had failure to make a complete decision. So I decided in that moment, I said, all right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the business until the business overtakes my current income. And a few months later, May, it was our anniversary. That was like the first time after going to my first master, making the investment, going all in, $5,000 investment, flying out there. We had our first breakthrough month. And it was so scary. Even then we did over $20,000 in sales. And since then, we've not had a not profitable month since that time, multiple six figure months. It's been insane. Multiple six figure days even. And going through that process, it was like those six figure days, it would have taken me like five, 10 years just to produce that money, cleaning carpets, five, 10 years that we produced in just one day. And a lot of things went into that one day. Yeah, it's crazy to even think about. And it all came down to that moment where I still think of it to this day where he says indecision will be your killer. If you make a good decision, great. Make a bad decision, you can always fix it. But indecision will kill you. And in that moment, I realized this is not the decision I want. I'm going to go all in on the business that I actually want to create, the coaching business, the business where I'm redefining what it means to be a businessman, what's evolved into what you see today. And so ask yourself today, where, what are the options that you have and how can you go out there and make a decision with excellence, not just perfection? How can you go out there and make a decision, not out of fear, but out of faith, knowing where you're going? You know, he looked at that angel investment first seed round inside of Uber and said, he didn't care. He says, like, what I've done is I don't regret. I make a decision I don't regret and I move on. You, you feel like you're going to make a decision. You're going to regret what you did. It's like you just need to make a decision, not regret it and move on and fix it if there's ever a problem. I've consistently done that since then, which has allowed us since then to get me out of the carpet cleaning job, start our own business and multiple businesses that ultimately set us up for the success that we have today. So ask yourself again, where's the place where you could take responsibility to make a massive decision where you can be okay with making a wrong decision or a right decision? It's okay because you know where you're going in life and you do not regret them because regret them, regretting them will make it seem like you're flinching. 
Regret's what makes you flinch at every single new thing coming your way. And inside of making that decision and taking responsibility, you will find more power in yourself and inside of your business to be able to go out there and grow your vision. It's okay if you mess up because all the greats have done it. And if you don't, it means that you are not ready to be great. And I know that the people listening to this show, you are ready to be great. And so thank you, Gary V, for that timeless lesson. I'm super grateful for it. Uh, just going back there and, and seeing that again in that conversation, we've since then had times where we spit in our hands, so not COVID, and, and we shake our hands even with spit in them, uh, which has been a really interesting memory that I have with Gary. So thank you so much, Gary Vaynerchuk. Again, that was awesome and such a great memory. And for the guys that have not checked out that full story, it's actually inside of my book, The Modern Day Businessman's Success Without Sacrifice. We have the audio version on Audible as well as grabbing the digital version at nicholasbailey.com slash ebook. Grab it 100% free, or you can head over to Amazon for your very own copy or even a hardcover copy as well. We're actually going to the in-depths of that story, the memory that I had from it, writing it down on paper, and the things that I got from it that I couldn't even put into this video because there was so much that I got from Gary Vee in that moment that sometimes those small little moments that shift everything forever and that's what I'm hoping this episode did for you. So go ahead and grab the book. Go check out that story with me and Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'm excited to do more stuff with them in the future. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube and ring that bell for future episodes. And if you're listening to the podcast version, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Yet yeah, also go down below, leave us a review and a rate because that helps us get this episode into more ears, more people to see more transformation in the world. And it starts with you and I sharing the message. Thank you guys. And I'll see you on the next episode.